Hi, and welcome back. In this quick start lesson, you'll learn how to use send and receive to control components in Protopie. Previously, we went through the process of making reusable components and changing their corresponding properties. Now it's time to take it to the next level. Open the Pi file in the studio. Here we have a sound equalizer prototype ready. See these sliders? They are made as components. We want to be able to play around with the value or range from a fixed set of options. In practice, sliders are difficult to manipulate, but with Protopy, it's easy as pie. We'll show you some cool techniques to be able to reset any of these sliders individually or all at once. Ready? But before we begin, one golden rule to remember is that communication with components will always involve a set of features called send and receive. The send and receive is essentially a unique way of communication in Protopy. We all understand that Protopy is based on the trigger object response model, though send and receive also falls into this model. A set of send and receive allows you to break your interactions into even smaller sections. Here we have the same interaction, but with send and receive applied. In simpler terms, Protopy processes your interactions by pairing send and receive as parts that make up a whole set. So what if you have tons of send and receive? Would Protopy recognize which one is paired to which? Well, a send or a receive always comes with a few required settings you need to fill in. First and foremost is the message. A message can be whatever you like, and Protopy pairs your send and receive by recognizing the exact same message using the same text formatting. Next up is the channel. A channel decides where your message is sent to or received from. So your send and receive builds up a connection that makes use of the same message and matching channels. Now that we've got that covered, shall we dig into our first interaction? Let's go back to our Pi. When you click this reset button, you'll want the three sliders in the scene to return to their original settings. First, create a tap trigger assigned to the reset button followed by a send response. In the channel section, choose send to current scene. Pro tip time. Imagine send to current scene is like you talking publicly so everyone at the current scene can hear you and respond. In our case, we're sending a message to the equalizer scene where the instances slider one through three are located. Send to current scene simply means that they will all receive the message. As for the message, try inputting reset all. Then head over to our main component and add a receive trigger. Then select receive from current scene to match. Use the same message, reset all, so your receive will find its way back to the send and make a connection. From here, you can add a reset response to bring the slider to its initial state, and it will essentially respond to your tap trigger in the equalizer scene. Go back to the scene in preview. Toggle the sliders and click reset, and it works as it should. Now let's animate the resetting experience for each individual slider. See these buttons right here? We'll use each one to control our component separately. First, add a tap trigger to the small reset button. Then, once again, a send response. This time, choose Send to Component. Then, select the component instance you want to make changes to. Let's go with Slider 1. Another pro tip. Unlike Send to Current Scene, Send to Component is like whispering to only one person. So only that person, or in our case, only the designated component, will be able to hear your message. Input Reset Item. So we know its function is to reset only one specific item. Now go back to the main component, add a receive trigger, and, and to match, select receive from parent as our channel. Receive from parent is used when we want to receive a message from the parent hierarchy. For example, the parent component, or in our case, the parent scene where the component is located. Use the same message we placed in send. Once again, we want this singular component to reset so we'll just copy and paste that response from our previous interaction. Let's see it in action. 
Now, when we click the button beneath slider one, it only affects that individual slider. Pretty cool, right? Go ahead and copy and paste these interactions to work the same way for the buttons under sliders two and three. Be sure to select the correct component associated with the button within the send response. You might be wondering if you can use the same message for the different sliders. Absolutely. Why? Because every single instance already has the receive set up. Let's preview it again. So we've gotten past creating an interaction that affects multiple component instances at once, as well as just one at a time. Notice how there were two more options for our channel within receive? Receive from child component is handy when dealing with components that exist within other components. On our scene, let's select slider one, the text beneath it and the button beneath it too. Turn them all as one component. Then you select it and examine its layers. You'll see that it lists the individual components that exist within the new component we just made. We call these subcomponents or child components, and Protopy automatically names the parent component we just created, component one. When you check the send channel for component one, Protopy has already set it to send to child component and the slider has receive from parent listed as its channel. Why? The slider is a child component because it's part of a larger parent component called component one. In closing, while working with send and receive, you must remember, first, if you want multiple components to be affected by a single interaction, set the message channel to send and receive from current scene. Second, if you want to adjust a single component, set it to send to component and receive from parent. Third and last, if you want components to interact with other components within themselves, use send to child component and receive from parent. Great job. You're making a lot of progress by learning in depth about components and relationships they share. But there's more to come. See you in the next one.